What's up, everybody? We're going to go ahead and give you a little rig rundown of all the guitars I use in my band, Park Bench Heroes. Um, a lot of these guitars, you if you've listened to any of the songs that we play, any of our recordings, they've been used on different ones. So we're going to go through them, talk a little bit about them, and we'll take a look and see what I got here. So we'll start with my 1964 Fender Jazzmaster. I pretty much consider this uh, the holy grail of my collection. So it's mostly original. Um, I don't necessarily know for a fact, but luckily I know I know the guitar's entire history. Passed through word of mouth. Uh, the guy that I got it from, it came from his dad. Uh, the guy I got it from used it in a garage band he was in in high school. And his dad actually played in country western bands in Nebraska. So you can tell just from looking at this guitar that it has definitely been used. Which I love, you know. Anything like this gives a guitar a lot of character. And also knowing that other people have used it in gigs and countless practice sessions. So, like I said, it's pretty much all original. From what I've been told, these pickup covers are not original to the guitar. They are off of around the same year of Jazzmaster. Not sure exactly what year, but these pickup covers have been changed. And the one thing that really sucks, this is the original neck, but as you can tell, I mean, the finish on the neck is damn near perfect compared to the rest of the guitar. So the original owner of the guitar had this neck refinished, which back in the day, no one... Especially anyone who was playing a guitar wasn't thinking, hey man, 50 years from now, I'm going to completely destroy the value on this thing by refinishing this neck. It was all about, probably mostly all about smoothing the back of the neck out. Running up and down the fretboard would be the reason for doing that. And if you're playing it, I mean, you know, I really don't ever get a guitar because I, I'm not a collector. I, everything I ha I'm going to play, and I'm going to play the piss out of it. So it really doesn't bother me. And, you know, it's got the good old Jazz Master weird rhythm and lead circuit. So instead of a toggle switch, you have this switch up here. So when you're in a lead circuit, you're using a bridge pickup. And you have your tone and uh, volume control knobs. But then if you switch over to this rhythm circuit, it switches up to this side. And now this is your tone and volume control knobs. Which you'll see in my next guitar that is kind of a waste for me. Because I really, on this, on this guitar, I never really liked any kind of tones I got out of the rhythm circuit, honestly. So I really never even mess with that, you know. I'm... I'm the type of guitar player, pretty much the only pickup I ever use in anything, I pretty much only use a bridge pickup, depending. You know, there are certain times when I'll switch over, but... So, that's the 64 Jazzmaster. So, the 64, I pretty much always keep in standard E tuning. And all my guitars in standard type tunings, I always run... 10 to 46s. I just get Ernie Balls. I mean, a lot of people dog these, say they're cheap strings. But I change strings so much that, I mean, I've never had a problem with them. I like them. I don't like lighter gauge strings, and I don't necessarily like real heavy gauge either. You know, I've never had a problem getting the, getting the kind of bends I want to do or anything. I'm, I'm kind of a heavy-handed player, so really, and I play acoustic a lot. I actually... Anytime I write a song, I pretty much always originally write the song on acoustic. So pretty much everything I'm playing on, um, and this is the only, these are the only acoustic strings I will put on any guitar. This is, this is it. Doesn't matter what tuning I'm doing, this is it. So when I'm writing songs, I'm playing 12 to 53s anyways. So 
you know I really don't I don't need a lighter gauge string on my electrics so this is this has been my main guitar uh, for a long time I absolutely loved the sound of the jazz master you know actually before I got this guitar I never you know it the only guitars that I ever used to think they were worth a crap were either a Strat or a Les Paul. But, man, when I first time I played this thing, I just fell in love with the tone of it, the feel of it. You know, I'm, I am kind of partial to the Fender-style neck. You know, I like the longer scale length. Um, I like the shape of Fender necks. So I've always been more of a Fender guy. But it was more Strats. But like I said, man, it's, I've written so many songs on this guitar. Um, a lot of the hip-hop stuff I do, the beats that I'm producing and stuff, if you hear a guitar, or even if actually if you hear a bass too, because I actually use a bass simulator. So any of the bass guitar work or regular guitar work you hear in my hip-hop beats, it was most likely recorded on this guitar. But the only downside is this is a 64. This guitar right here is definitely irreplaceable so I was kind of worried about playing out all the time you know you get a drunk idiot wander up on stage and knock this freaking thing over and break the original neck on my irreplaceable guitar then I got to scour the internet for a 64 jazz master neck so this is my most recent guitar that I've bought and it's intended to be my stage replacement for the 64. And this is a 2019 American Professional Limited Edition Jazz Master with an all rosewood neck. So it is a little bit different. Um, like the control switching circuit, all that is taken away on this one. You just have normal lead which is just your bridge pickup which is pretty much all i use you got your blend of both pickups and then what they call what they usually call the rhythm circuit which is your neck pickup and then just one tone one volume um that's one difference doesn't have the same switching and all the electronics in it like the nor like a normal jazz master would which I don't use anyway so it's really kind of pointless for me to have any of that it has a more modern fender neck you know it's a more modern shape and with the all rosewood neck I mean this thing honestly plays it plays way faster than a 64 you know I've I've only had this guitar for a little amount of time but honestly I I almost think it's like a night and day difference between the 64 actually you know you I know a lot of guys that say the vintage stuff is better you just can't match the tone and stuff and I don't necessarily agree with that at least not in this case um, it has different pickups in it you know it's got a more modern hotter pickup in it still the same style of pickup close to the same tone except hotter so you get a little bit more output out of it um, and honestly the tones a little bit different too also on this one we don't have we don't have a normal jazz master bridge see the one problem with with the jazz master is the way the saddles are on it there's you have all these different grooves that your string can go in on these saddles there's not just one groove for the string to ride in so what tends to happen is if you're playing really heavy like real heavy picking you're being really aggressive what will happen is this string will actually move in the saddle it'll switch between these little notches while you're playing and it'll th either throw it out of tune you could possibly break a string so an old trick that a lot of guys did on those jazz masters this is a fender mustang style bridge so the difference is is the saddles have one groove in them i mean it's still it still could possibly come out of that if you were really getting crazy but uh, it's an upgrade that guys have done for a long time on Jazz Masters. And on this one, Fender went ahead and did it from the factory for you. It's a little bit, I think it's a little bit easier to set the intonation on it like this. It, you don't have to worry about putting it in the right groove. Um, like I said, I haven't had this guitar for long. And 
you know, when I bought it, is you run into a lot. Most most guitar shops aren't real good at doing a setup. So I played it out of the box for a while. I had a little bit of problem. The low E string was buzzing. So what I did is I went through. First thing I did is I rewrapped the string. Because the way it was, it was only hitting on this one fret. And it was only this string. So I tried rewrapping the string. Because when they wrapped around the tuning tuning post they wrapped up instead of wrapping down so it was had kind of a funny angle coming off the nut so i tried changing that didn't work still had to lower fret buzz so i came down here lowered the action a little bit and set the intonation got the intonation set perfect got the action where i want it and i still had to still had a little bit of fret buzz so I checked the relief on the neck and it was just it need, it it didn't have enough relief in it. You know, this string the low E, actually all the strings really didn't have any space space on the 12th when you fretted first and last. So, well I did went ahead and I did a little truss rod adjustment on it and I mean this thing's perfect now. So, once again this is uh this one's in standard E. This is my main guitar. Tens. Tens to 46s, which I run on pretty much everything. And that's the that's the newest one. This is the this is the main one you'll hear. Moving on with the electrics. This is my Ernie Ball Silhouette Special. So <clears throat> One of the main differences in this guitar from the other ones is we have a we have a humbucker, which it's actually an active humbucker. So you got let's see if I can get it out of here. You've got a cavity to put a nine volt battery in, so the pickup is actually powered by its own nine volt battery instead of just be being powered off the amp. I actually got this guitar from the same person that I got that guitar from. This was actually the first electric guitar that I bought uh, after getting my life straightened around. You know, people who don't know me, you know, I had a lot of guitars before. I had all kinds of strats and stuff, and I made a lot of bad decisions in my life. Ended up, every guitar I owned, I pawned, you know, eventually ended up being homeless. And once I turned things back around, you know, and started being able to afford stuff like this again, this was the first electric that I got. So this guitar I keep in drop D tuning. It's in standard tuning, except it's in drop D. Same with the strings. I still run 10 to 46s in it. You know, I don't put a thicker string. When I go to drop D, I don't change to a thicker top string or anything like that you know drop d's not going that crazy so i don't feel i need to needs polished up a little bit you can tell like i said all these guitars get played a lot but this thing's in amazing shape i'm really not sure what year it is um i've never tried to look up the serial number to see what year it is yeah i have no idea how to tell on an ernie ball either it's a G on the first first part of the uh, serial number. If anyone knows what that means, I have no idea. So, any of our drop D stuff, I'll be playing this guitar. Locking tuners. It seems to stay in tune pretty good. I really, I'm not much, I'm not much of a tremolo guy. Um, you'll see on one of my other guitars, I've got a uh, Floyd Rose on it. That's really the only time I'll use any kind of tremolo is if it's something with the Floyd Rose. But a guitar like this, I mean, the only reason, honestly, the only reason that this bar is on here is it's not removable on this bridge. So that's the only reason it's on here. And then the Ernie Balls, your truss rod adjustment is back here, which makes it a little bit nicer. All you got to do is... You put a key in there and just turn the thing instead of having to 
you know like on the on the 65 it's impossible to do truss rod adjustments because you have to it's up inside the neck you actually have to take the neck off of that and then most modern guitars it'll be up here but the ernie ball all the ernie balls do this makes it they say it makes it a little easier doing it here you know i've never really had a problem adjusting one up here on this end of the neck so and i've never had to adjust this one this one's been this one had a setup had a professional setup done on it um by god knows who whoever the guy that i got it from knows um but right before i got it so the action's perfect on it the neck's perfect on it i never had to do any of that kind of stuff i don't ever take any of my guitars anywhere and have any of that stuff done you know i've been playing long enough and have been around enough people that knew how to do all that stuff that I just kind of watch them do it on guitars, you know. Enough times had the right people teach me that I do my, all my own setups, you know, any kind of maintenance, um, polishing frets, conditioning the fretboard, adjusting the truss rod if it needs it, putting strings on. You know, I'm, I'm not the type of person that will let anyone touch my guitar. So all that stuff, I kind of just do it on my own. But yeah, this is Ernie Ball, always in drop D. This is one of the cheapest guitars that I have. Um, I really can't even remember what the model number on it is. It is a Jackson, Chinese made, which I don't necessarily like. But at the time I got this guitar, I had went to a guitar shop. And I was looking at getting a Jackson, you know, I wanted, wanted something with a flat neck, um, wanted something more metal. And I actually ran into a guy I knew, he was at the guitar store at the same time, and he was playing around on his BC Rich 7 string, and he, he told me, he said, man, grab, grab one of these 7 strings, you ought to try one of these out. And I had never played a 7 string before. And I started messing around on this thing, and I kind of liked it, because you got your extra bass string. Uh, the way this is tuned right now, it's just tuned in standard tuning right now. So, on your regular six strings, I'm in standard E, but on my top string, I got that tuned to B. So, it's just standard tuning. It's the next step down what it would normally be going from the E. Um, I'm actually probably going to be upgrading my seven string pretty soon because we do have we do have a couple songs I've been working on that I use the seven string on, and you know it was a cheap guitar. I had never had a seven string before. I more got it to play around with to see if I'd even like the seven string, and I do. I do like it. It's different playing it next way wider. It takes a little bit of getting used to. But, I mean, if you understand music theory and, you know, know how to make chord shapes and know what notes you're playing anyways, you know, if you know the fretboard like I do, just adding an extra string on really isn't that big of a deal. Um, and that's, you know, to get those heavy metal tones, that's what a lot of guys are doing now, seven strings, eight strings. But it's got cheap pickups in it. They're not, they're not horrible but they're also, you know, nothing to write home about. You know, that when you start turning up volume on your amp, they tend to feed back real easily and stuff like that. You have to really mess around with your... You have to get a good blend of your volume on your guitar and your amp together with this thing, you know. But for a play toy, something to figure out if I even wanted a 7-string. It wasn't a bad guitar, but... I'm looking to upgrade upgrade my seven string rig pretty soon. So the next guitar is my Jackson Guitar Center 37th anniversary soloist. This is my Floyd Rose guitar. This is the first guitar I've ever had with the Floyd Rose. And you know, a lot of people are intimidated by the Floyd Rose. You know, saying, oh, it's impossible to tune, it won't stay in tune. Which, if you understand how it works and understand the process uh, of how to tune it, how to put strings on it, 
it's actually really easy. You know, the first couple of times you do it, it's kind of tedious and time consuming. But once you figure out what you're doing and when you got to make the adjustments, it is actually it is actually really simple. So the main thing, putting strings on a Floyd Rose, you have to make sure your bridge back here stays level the whole time you're tuning it up. So you'll notice, guys, with a Floyd Rose guitar, the back cover is always gone for the tremolo springs and your tremolo adjustment. And the reason is, is like I said, when you're tuning it up, putting strings on it, whatever, you have to keep this bridge level the whole time. So you're constantly, you know, you'll tune up a little bit, go up, you know, go up a, a pitch or maybe half a pitch. And then you got to level this bridge back out or else you'll never get this thing in tune. It'll never stay in tune. Once you figure that system out, it's actually not too bad. <clears throat> like I said, it's a Guitar Center 37th Anniversary Edition. Um, actually, some kid had this guitar and he had absolutely no idea how to use the Floyd Rose at all. He never had the never had the arm on there, had other people put strings on it, put it in standard tuning, and just play it. And he really didn't play metal type stuff to even be needing this guitar. So I actually got this guitar pretty cheap. Um, it has some decent pickups in it. It's got the EMGs in it. And it has a turbo boost circuit, which I never use. I mean, I got so many effects and stuff running through my amp that I never need. I don't need to be running anything hotter, really. It just... Doing that, using any effects just makes it so muddy, you know. So, this guitar, um, this is the only electric that I go up on gauge, gauge of strings. So, what am I running on this? I, th I think I'm running be a beefy, some uh, Ernie Ball beefy slinkies on this. So my top string is a 52, and I think my, I think my high, I think my high E is an 11. I don't know, I'd have to look it up. I'm pretty sure I run beefy, beefy slinkies on it. I know this is definitely, definitely a 52 though. And then the reason that I run the thicker strings on this one is this guitar I always keep in straight D tuning, which is a whole step down from standard tuning for playing stuff like, you know, Metallica, Sad But True is a popular song that's a whole step down. Um, a lot of the heavier stuff will be a whole step down or even lower, but this one I always keep a whole step down. Only have, only have a couple songs where I actually use this guitar. Um, really the band that I'm in right now, we're not really much of a heavy, heavy style of music playing band. We do have some stuff that's a little bit heavier, but for the most part, you know, it's not, not metal. So that's all the electrics. Now we're going to run through the acoustics. And this guitar right here. So, I bought this guitar solely for one gig. I needed an acoustic electric, was doing an acoustic set with uh, the lead singer of Park Bench Heroes on New Year's Eve, and my only acoustic that I had at the time wasn't electric. It wasn't an acoustic electric. It had no kind of pickup in it. So... The only reason I bought this guitar was for that one, one gig, and I ended up, I ended up lucking out pretty good on this guitar. So I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money, you know. I, I wanted a decent guitar, but I didn't want to spend a whole lot. So I ended up picking up this Epiphone. This is oh, it says it in the tag. I'm pretty sure it's a, okay, it's a DR, DR 500M. C E slash N A. So it's an Epiphone made in Indonesia. Um, 
it's actually an all solid wood guitar you know to find a, an acoustic guitar in this kind of price range you know usually anything over anything solid wood you're you're over a grand easy you know you're probably looking fifteen hundred dollars probably for an all solid wood guitar nowadays and this thing was a little bit under a grand a few hundred dollars under right now you know i've got the elixirs on it always 12 to 53s right now it's in drop d because i was working on like i said all the stuff that i write i usually write on acoustic and i was working on a song in drop d so right now that's where i have this tuned um it's got the e sonic pickups in it it actually has two separate pickups there's one in the body of the guitar like there would normally be but you also have this one up on the up on the neck outside the sound hole so you can actually run this guitar this guitar will actually run stereo if you use both pickups so you have two you have two different output jacks to plug into your amp and then you select what you're going to do up here with the uh, with the electronic control. It has an onboard tuner, which I really don't ever use unless I'm just playing it by itself, not plugged in. Um, and I really like this guitar. Um, you know, for for under a thousand dollars, you know, it to get the Gibson equivalent of this guitar, you're looking about eighteen hundred bucks. Is the Gibson going to sound a little bit better? Yeah, yeah, the Gibson is probably going to sound a little bit better than this. But for this kind of money, you know, you really don't have to, you don't have to worry about dropping it or someone knocking it over. You know, if something happens, I'm not going to be so mad. And then, you know, you got little cosmetic issues like a little, I don't know if you can really see it on the video. Might have to go in the light. Yeah, but where the, the binding on the neck, you can see where a little bit of the paint from them painting the body ran into the binding of the neck, which with Gibson's quality nowadays, you might end up seeing some stuff like that too on a Gibson. Um, there's a little bit of a blemish on the where the binding and the neck meet up towards the nut, which really isn't a big deal. It doesn't affect the playability at all. You know, it's just quality control stuff, you know. But it's still, I mean, it's a beautiful guitar. Plays great. Tone's great on it. And plugged in, it sounds good, too. So anything, <clears throat> any recordings you hear or any time we play live that I'm using an acoustic, it's, uh, it's always this guitar. So, and the last one we have, probably the one that I've written more songs on than any other one. This is my Fender CD-140S, all mahogany. The entire body of the guitar is mahogany. Um, the top is solid, back and sides are laminate, laminate mahogany. It's a very, it's a cheap guitar, so you're not going to get all solid wood in a guitar like this. Same strings, always elixirs. This one right now is in standard tuning. I was actually, uh, just working on some practice stuff. It was all in standard tuning last time I played this one. And... Like I uh, was talking about before, you know, I completely screwed my life up. You know, I was homeless. Never thought I'd have a life again. And this ended up being the first guitar that I bought, you know, after getting my life straightened back out. Because I had all kinds of nice guitars before and I pawned every single one of them for money. I was in a really bad spot for a while, but, you know, when things started turning around, this was the first one that I bought, and I've played this 
played this guitar definitely more than any of the other ones I've had it the longest. Um, it's also, I, th I think I said the seven string was the cheapest. This was about the same, same price. So it's about the cheapest guitar I have too. But it means a lot more than the other ones. Um, being a cheaper guitar, it's definitely probably not the easiest one to play. The, the neck, I don't even know what the fretboard is made out of. But like this binding on here just seems super cheap. Fretboard seems like cheap material. The frets aren't bad, but you can just tell, you know. The neck is like super shellacked. It actually makes it really smooth. It makes going up and down the neck easy. But I mean, there is so much lacquer on this thing. Which is indicative of a cheap guitar. But it plays it plays nice. And for, for beat around practice acoustic, especially for someone who ain't had nothing for a while, you know. The tone's pretty good on it too. It's not as good as the Epiphone. Definitely not as good, but... This is basically just my practice guitar. So that's a rundown of all my guitars uh, that you guys will hear anytime I'm doing anything for Park Bench Heroes, <clears throat> any of the stuff I produce for other people. You know, like I said, most of these guitars have been in recordings. Um, they all get played out except for the 64 now because, you know, I just don't feel right taking that guitar out. Um, Maybe someday when we got mad security at a show and I don't have to worry about anybody touching the guitar or something happening to it, it'll get busted back out. But I think next next on the must-have list is going to be a Les Paul. I'm thinking, you know, for working on some heavier stuff, possibly tuned to drop C, I'm going to get a Les Paul and that'll be next on the list. Um, I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. What you think I should get next down in the comments.